All right, so for today's lesson, what we're doing is finding the area of composite figures. And if you remember from last week, a composite figure is a figure that's made up of more than one different shape. So you actually have different shapes kind of put together. Uh, and now we're finding the area, which again means everything, all of the space inside the two-dimensional figure. That's what we're trying to figure out uh, how much space would uh, take up. So our first example here says find the area of the yellow figure, and you can tell this is definitely a composite figure. It's made up of a couple of different things here. Um, the easiest way to start when it comes to finding the area when it's on a grid like this, okay, we don't have any units. Uh, it's not giving us inches or feet or anything like that, uh, but we do have the little grid blocks. So step one would be just simply to count the number of squares that lie entirely in the figure. So here is a whole square, all right, a whole unit. All of these are whole units. So we can actually just count those up. And if you were to count all of the whole ones, we're talking about just the whole ones. So we're not going to count this guy, this guy, this guy, or this guy, or this guy, because those are not whole units. There's 45 whole ones all together. All right, so you can see here, all in the red is the whole units. And then we have these yellow guys, which are, if you can tell, those are cut perfectly in half. So we're going to count the number of half squares uh, in the figure. And there's exactly five. There's one, two here. And then there's three here, which is a total of five. And since those are exactly half of a square, we're just gonna count those as half units. So I could, I could do it like this. I could, I could add half plus half plus half plus half plus half, or I could take one half times five. So all in all, there's gonna be a total of two and a half with those uh, half units together. Now, all we have to do then is take the total whole units that we found and add on together those half units that we counted. So we said that there were 45 total whole units, and after we counted the five half units, that equates to just two and a half whole units. So 45 plus two and a half is what we're gonna do here. And that makes our area gonna be 47.5. And since we don't have a label, we're just gonna say units squared, okay, or square units, because this is area. And again, this gives you a perfect representation of, to show you what we're talking about with area, it takes exactly 47 and a half units of these square units to fill inside the shape, which is exactly what area is. Okay, so that's how you find the area of a composite figure. Now, that's on uh, actual grid paper. Now, if it's not on grid paper, you're gonna have to look for some certain things here, okay? And I have the steps listed here. First, you have to look at the figure and break the figure into smaller standard shapes. So this is where you're gonna have to kind of look at it and say, ah, okay, if I draw a line here, this is actually a rectangle and a triangle put together. And you're gonna have to know this because then you're gonna have to find the area of each one of those shapes. And the area has different formulas for every shape, pretty much. So a rectangle, you would find the area by knowing the formula is length times width, okay? A triangle is the formula area equals one half base times height. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to find the area of, the, of each separate shape and then add them together so you can find the area of the shape uh, to its entirety. So that's what we're doing here when we find the area of a composite figure that's not on grid paper. So if we look at this first example here, okay, if you weren't, if you, if I didn't have the dotted lines, you would just look at this and you would think it was just one kind of big blob or just one big uh, awkward shape. But by drawing these little dotted lines, you can see that this is a triangle. This is a rectangle because of this dotted line here. And you can look at this and think, oh, this is actually a parallelogram because there's two pairs of parallel sides. So really, I need three things that I have to find with this shape. I have to find the area of a triangle first, which will give me everything inside here, area of a rectangle, area of a parallelogram, and then add all three of those areas together to get the, the whole collective area of the entire shape. Now, you will be given in class, a paper, a paper with formulas for all kinds of different shapes. Um, so, and this is something that you're given even for the testing later in the year, but it gives you the formula for triangle, square, rectangle, parallelogram, which those are the three that we have right here. Um, and it has a trapezoid and of course a circle. So all of the formulas you will have at your 
um, at your fingertips there. So, okay, here we have the triangle. I'm going to deal with that first. Area of a triangle is one half times base times height. Now, a base and a height have to be perpendicular to one another. And what that means is the base and the height, and we're talking about any shape. In this case, it's a triangle that we're talking about, but they have to be, they have to create 90 degree angles, okay? So when you find the base and the height, if they are not at a 90 degree angle to, to one another, well, then you're actually looking at something different and you're not looking at the right information. So when I look here at this triangle, I do see that this line is perpendicular with this line, and it tells me that right here with this indicator, letting me know that that's a 90 degree angle, which means that this is a base and this is a height. Okay, so these are the numbers that I wanna use for the triangle. If they gave me something else that wasn't 90 degrees, well then that would be different information for something else. But that's what I need to use here. So I'm gonna be using one half, a part of the formula, times the base, which is 4.5 centimeters, times the height, which is 11.2. And when I do this, that will give me the area of the triangle. So 0.5 times 4.5 times 11.2. So the triangle gives me an area of 25.2, and that would be, again, a centimeter squared. Now that's just the triangle. Next, a rectangle, the rectangle up here. Rectangle is always just length times width for area. So area equals LW, which is length times width. And we can see that the width is going to be represented by this information here, which is 4.5 centimeters across by eight centimeters for the length. So 4.5 times eight, and it doesn't matter what order I put these in. In a multiplying problem, the order does not matter. So all I have to do is 4.5 times eight, and I get 36 centimeters squared. And there's one more shape. So we took care of the triangle, we took care of the rectangle, but now we need the parallelogram. And a parallelogram's formula is area equals base times height, just base times height. So these formulas are very similar. This is base times height. A triangle is one half base times height. And the reason for that is if you think about it, a parallelogram, if you were to cut a parallelogram in half, you would have a triangle. And that's why the formula for a triangle is one half base times height. A parallelogram is just the whole base times the height. So again though, base and heights, every time you find a base and a height, they have to be perpendicular, which means 90 degrees. So when I look at this parallelogram, I need two bits of information that are perpendicular to one another. So here is eight centimeters, and it's showing that it is perpendicular to this line going straight up, which is 6.7. So that's gonna be my height, okay? So we have eight times the height, which is 6.7. And when I do that, eight times 6.7, I get 53.6 centimeters squared. So now we have the area of the parallelogram, the rectangle, and the triangle. We just have to add them all together. So I need to add this plus this plus this. Here we go, 25.2 plus 36 plus 53.6 is 114, so we have 114.8, and that would be centimeters squared. And again, what that means is if I had a unit that was a centimeter, exactly one square, that was one centimeter by one centimeter big, if I had, I would take 114.8 of them to fill up the inside of this entire figure. Okay, so. I just want to show you one more example of a composite figure finding the area because this one involves a circle, okay? So here, if, if this line weren't here, you would be able to hopefully figure out that if you drew a line straight across here, there is a semicircle with a rectangle. So the formula for a rectangle, we already went over, that is just length times width, all right? And the formula for a circle, area of a circle, we talked about in my previous uh, lesson, is area equals pi r squared. Now, that would be for a whole circle. I don't have a whole circle here, I have a semicircle. So I have to take this and divide by two because it's exactly half of a circle. So these two things together and then I will be able to add them and get my answer. All right, I have a length and I have a width, exactly what I need for the rectangle. So 22 times 10. Anytime you multiply by 10, you can just add a zero, so that's 220. 
and that would be feet squared. So that tells me that it takes up that much space to fill up this part of the figure. Now for the semicircle, again, it's pi r squared. This is pi times the radius squared divided by two. So pi, I'm gonna use 3.14 for pi because 10, um, 10, the diameter, is not a multiple of seven. And even if I find the radius, which I do need to find, the radius is gonna be five, okay? And five is not a multiple of seven as well. So I won't use 22 sevens here. I'm gonna use 3.14 times the radius, which again, I had to figure out by dividing the diameter by two, is five, and then all of that divides by two because it's a semicircle. So 3.14 times five squared divided by two is 39.25, and that would be feet squared as well, and that tells me how much room it takes to fill up the semicircle. Add this, and this, and I have the total area. So let's see, 220 plus 39.25, and the whole area of this figure is 259.25 uh, feet squared, or square feet. Which means, again, if I had a one by one foot square, it would take 259.25 of them to fill up this entire figure. Now, I just have one more thing to show here, and I want you to do this one on your own uh, for watching, and I want you to bring your answer to me tomorrow. So if you look carefully, you can pause it on this at this part. I want you to find the area of this figure, all right? And you should be able to tell what shapes we have here, okay? And you should be able to use the formulas that I gave previously in the video. I, want, I don't want to really give you any help here. I want to see if you can uh, come up with the answer for this one on your own tomorrow, and that would be it. See you tomorrow. Thank you.